if you refuse to do white food things, then I will go pick up the grocery. Tell how do you respect them? She is like eight months pregnant with twins in this video. You think he's sitting on the couch smoking. Get up off your pathetic ass, Stephen. And how about you do something for your f***ing wife who's pregnant? You entitled piece of shit. Steven Crowder is an absolute POS trash human being. Change my mind. You won't. <laughs> you won't. And I'm sure you probably already think the same way because the drama circling around Steven Crowder is unreal. If you guys don't know who he is, I'm sure you do. He's the meme. He's the meme guy. He's got the change my mind thing where he goes out and aggravates people. Sort of Ray Comfort style too, where he probably manipulates their responses and edits to make people look stupid. Some people he agrees with and then of course they look great. It's all very confrontational and meant to aggravate people. So my hope with like extremely conservative internet personalities like this or anybody in general who's got like a really out there aggressive personality is that they don't like harass people on the street like that in real life, right? That's just their shtick, right? It's their internet persona. That's not how they treat people in real life. That's not how they would treat their spouse, for example. Well, it turns out a lot has been going behind the scenes with Steven Crowder and his ex-wife now. Uh, some ring camera footage was leaked by her family that shows him being horrible to her. Just like, it's unbelievable, we'll get to it. But she was like very pregnant, like eight months pregnant at the time with twins and he's sitting there berating her for not being like woman enough or, or a good wife. He's she's not a good, she's not worthy of him. That is something he says. She wasn't worthy and doing her wifely duties and he's the man and deserves respect and all this bullshit. But this goes back a little bit further. Now, he sort of spilled the beans on his own divorce first in a video where it was just a very bizarre way of phrasing things. He goes on and on about not wanting to be thrown under the bus or throw her under the bus, but literally that is sort of what he's doing in this video. So let's just get into it. I've got a lot to say. Uh, I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck for going on years now. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. This was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. <laughs> like I said, very strange way of, of phrasing this. It seems like his issue is that she, as a woman, is even allowed to divorce him. Like, that that's like a crazy right she shouldn't have. How dare you, Texas? Texas is so woke, they're letting women like, get divorced and shit. It's been the most heartbreaking experience of my life. What I consider to be my deepest personal failure. And just so you know, my opinions on parenting and families have not changed. Um, I've always believed that Children need a mom and a dad, that divorce is horrible. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad and that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. There's a lot going on here. Um, like I said, his issue is mostly that she's allowed to get a divorce. And he's sort of, I feel, I mean, this is my personal opinion, changed my mind in the comments. That joke is not gonna get old throughout this entire video, by the way, I'm so sorry in advance. But I think this is some sort of guilt trip on her for choosing to leave him because, oh, I think what's best for children is to have, you know, both parents married and, you know, I'm not choosing this, it's on her. And she's therefore not choosing what's best for the children. So I do feel like in essence, this is sort of like putting her at fault for not wanting to stay with him while not taking any responsibility for the reasons why, which become very clear, you'll see later. Um, and then he's also blaming the legal system, which by the way, it's not just Texas, you know, the incredibly <laughs> progressive state of Texas. It's the entire United States. Every single state has some form of no fault divorce where you're allowed to leave the person and you don't have to like prove anything or it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're unhappy, you should be able to leave. It doesn't matter. I don't understand why he needs to feel this like control and that word is a key word that will keep coming up throughout this entire video because he is really trying to control, manipulate everything about her life to the point of not even wanting to let her leave, yet he has the audacity to start this video by saying he's got a boot on his neck. Okay, Steven. So for well over a year, uh, well over a year, in the best interest as well as physical safety of my children, we've decided to keep this issue private and to resolve it uh, 
privately with the appropriate attorneys. Physical safety of your children. That part confuses me and he brings this up several times. He keeps talking about the safety of his children, which to a degree I can understand. Like as a child of divorce, um, I was told negative things about one parent or the other and that was really toxic. And you know, even if I had the worst divorce in the world, I would never utter one ugly word publicly or privately about the father of my children ever. We're not getting a divorce, all is great. But I'm just saying, like, if that situation happened to me, I know how it feels to go through that and I would never, I would want my kid to think their dad is their hero even if I can't stand him. Like, that's just me. So on one hand, I understand him looking out for the safety of his children in that aspect, in their like mental health well-being. but as far as their physical safety, I'm really failing to understand where that's coming from. Also, I find it incredibly ironic that he's so concerned about their kids not knowing about any of this stuff, yet he's also willing to make this video, which is in essence sort of putting a lot of blame on his ex-wife and is making it very public, which opens the door for rebuttal. So with all the things that are coming out about him now, like part of me just as that child of divorce, I do feel bad for his kids because I know one day they will see that. They're gonna grow up and they're gonna see what I'm about to show you and they're, I mean, it's everywhere. It's not escapable. So I do feel for him in that, but like he literally provoked this and he goes after Candace Owens, who's like another huge like fighter on the internet. Like she's not gonna just let him say things without coming back at him, which she does. And we'll get into all of it. Um, but this is just all really strange to me that he's so worried about this information being private. Then why are you making this video? Just say, I'm getting divorced. It's a really tough time. We're keeping things private. Like that could be the end of it. But he's going in and saying, I didn't want this and Texas allows it. And I don't know why I have this accent, but that's just what he's doing. <laughs> True North here is that my children are blameless, completely without fault. And so we decided to resolve these issues privately until this video for some reason. Also, obviously your children are blameless. Like, why do you need to say that? <laughs> like, that seems like a conversation you would have with them. Uh, maybe if, if, you know, sometimes kids think it's their fault that their parents are getting divorced. So sure, you might have to address that. But like making it a video, it seems like he's trying to convince the public that his kids aren't at fault. And I just feel like we're all like, okay, yeah, of course. As it's in their best interests, uh, both emotionally and physically to do so. What is this physically thing? I don't understand. Like, can someone please explain it to me in the comments? Now, the other issue is, and this is something that I've kept private for likely far too long, um, many other people knew about this behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, leverage, knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know the feeling well. So this is just Pandora's box of drama right now. Like, I'm afraid to open it. Um, it's pretty clear that he's kind of directing this at Candace Owens, um, which, like I said, is a dumb thing to do if you wanna keep this on the DL. Like, I wouldn't wanna poke that bear if I were him, especially if he, you know, clearly he seems to believe that she's got some sort of information. Then what are you doing? This just, it, I mean, I hate to say it, but at this point, you're kind of asking for it. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. What's funny is that um, no one guessed that he was getting a divorce, so he's making it seem like everyone was guessing and everyone knew, literally nobody knew. The only speculation that I saw floating around was that he was gay. Didn't see anything about a divorce. So what is this, the, what is this horrible extortion that he's getting? What, where is this coming from? Well, this is the clip that's being referenced. Steven has a lot going on. I guess it's the best way to say it. He has a lot going on and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their lives. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. You know, Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, something should be said, or maybe if I feel 
that the public has a right to understand certain circumstances. That was it, pretty vague. And she even made it clear, like, if I need to defend myself for some reason, I might come out with more information. And he's like, well, let me just give her that reason on a silver platter. It just doesn't seem like it's genuinely coming from someone who doesn't want this information to get out, which is weird because he really should not want this information to get out. Now, granted, I don't think he had planned on this video leak that happened where he was like just berating his wife. I don't think he was planning for that, but regardless, what Candace said here was like, send him prayers. Don't, you know, be mean to him, essentially. How horrible of her. Now I can't stand Candace Owen, so it's very strange that I'm coming to her defense on this. But if I, if I have to be fair, really quick, let me get this out there. Candace Owens is part of the Daily Wire crew and recently the Daily Wire was trying to, or they were in some sort of negotiation with Steven Crowder to sign him. He was offered like a $50 million deal over a couple of years and he thought that that was just, it was not good enough for him. And he really put it down. Like slave wages, I do believe he called it, which is insane. Like, good God, that's so much money, but whatever. He was just so deeply offended by this ridiculously low ball of an offer um, that he came out with all this information against the Daily Wire, which like I said, Candace is a part of. So now she has, you know, a reason to go after Steven because this is like so much drama that she's involved with. And it got so bad that the Daily Wire actually came out with a full explanation of the entire contract and legal explanations of what their offer was and why it wasn't terrible. Like, <laughs> And the comments are so funny. Cause that drama really was not that long before all this divorce stuff started coming out, which made Steven look terrible, which obviously is tanking his views and his support overall, which probably means the Daily Wire would have given him more money than he definitely could have brought in at this point. So all the comments are like, man, you guys dodged a bullet with the new drama and accusations against Crowder, this aged well. Thank God that deal between Crowder and Daily Wire fell apart. Imagine the burden Daily Wire will have to experience with all the drama that is occurring. Occurring. They dodged a bullet and so did his ex-wife. Like she probably didn't run fast enough, but good for her for getting out of there. Cause I cannot even imagine. I <laughs> Could you imagine being married to Steven Crowder? I'm sorry, don't don't put yourself in too much of a depression thinking about that too. Just erase that, erase it from your brain right now. Now, some other uh, issues have been, uh, or I should say, uh, inferences have been more pernicious behind the scenes with demands and threats to use this information that they believe would be uh, so publicly embarrassing to me and my wife at a difficult time that it could be used, knowingly putting my children in harm's way. So stop hiding behind your kids, dude. And he even mentioned his wife in this. It's not gonna hurt her, right? All this information that could possibly come out behind the scenes, whatever, this is only gonna affect you and your image and your reputation. Your income, your, you know, your world is gonna be turned upside down. The only thing that it could get to your children with is that they will one day learn of the kind of person that you are, which ideally wouldn't happen, honestly. Like even if you are Satan incarnate, which I don't believe in that, but maybe you, I mean, if there were to be someone that it would be, anyway. Kids don't deserve to know that kind of stuff. Honestly, I really think kids should grow up loving their parents, respecting their parents, thinking the world of them. But this talk about like, oh, something was going on behind the scenes, show it. If someone was like threatening you, show it. Like this is, he's the kind of person that does this shit, right? He records phone calls, he screen captures private calls, he posts stuff publicly all the time. Why not this? Unless in those threats or whatever, there were details of your bullshit that you didn't want getting out. That's gotta be it. If it's not selfishly motivated for someone who is narcissistic like him, then I don't know what else would cause it. I know I'm not trying to diagnose anybody with narcissism, but he is very narcissistic. There are traits. Someone else probably could diagnose him and I would not be shocked. I'll just say that. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I loved a woman so much that I married her. A woman who, despite all of this, I still love as the mother of my children. Not as, you know, my wife or as a person, but she's the mother of my children. Okay, whatever. And she wanted something else for her life. That's not my choice. She simply wanted out and the law says that that's how it works. Now, what really gets under my skin in all of this is that he's taking no responsibility for his actions. Zero. It's all everybody. Else. It's my ex-wife's fault. It's, you know, people on the internet talking about me. It's their fault. It's the state of Texas. It's, you know, it's the politics that allow women to have rights. That's the problem, not me. Of course, look, I get it. There are multiple sides to every story, but one thing that is undeniable uh, in this case, is that it's no one's fault, but my own. No oh, oh, is he about to take responsibility? Accountability, maybe even? This is interesting. No one's fault, but my own in that I picked wrong. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't. You, you, you're kidding.
kidding me? Oh, it's almost as bad as when someone says, oh, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Like as their apology, when they do something really wrong, they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You're upset, I guess. <laughs> Not I'm sorry that I did the thing. I picked wrong. What? in that I picked wrong, and that's certainly not the fault of my children. No, why do we keep talking about his kids? Of course it's not their fault that anything is going on, and how dare you? It's not their fault that I picked wrong? How much more of a blame dump could you like give? Like it's the only thing I did wrong in this and the only thing I deserve blame for is that I didn't pick a wife who was more submissive and willing to put up with my toxic bullshit forever. I should have picked someone weaker. <laughs> that was my fault. That's where my, you know what guys, I'm so sorry, my bad. Didn't get a good enough doormat to marry me discussing the divorce any further on social media or on this show or in any public space is not what's best for them. I'll be handling this through the proper legal avenues and channels available. So then if it's not meant to be discussed publicly, what are you doing in this video? You're trying to drudge up drama with Candace Owens, like clearly, and you're talking about how you picked wrong and your wife wants to leave you and no fault divorce is wrong and America's system is messed up because women are allowed to leave and it's not my choice and she's not doing what's best for the kids and oh my God. But don't talk about this online, guys. It's not good for the kids. <sighs> and I hope that none of this has to go any further than that. And that's a threat. That's a threat to anybody talking about it. That's a threat that he's gonna get his little fancy lawyers to go after people that are talking about this. I don't know if he's specifically going for like Candace or the Daily Wire crew on this, or if he's talking about like anybody who talks, I don't know. He doesn't want this information out there. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna make a video talking about it, throwing several people under the bus and basically asking for drama. But if anybody responds, I'm gonna sue you. So I'm not gonna go too much more into this because I wanna get into the leaked video footage, but I will say that Candace Owens clapped back. She was really pissed off. She did say a lot of what I was feeling about this as well. And also said that it wasn't fair because his ex-wife does not have the same social platform as he does. And then she <laughs> invited her on to her own show to say, well, if you want a platform, you're welcome to come talk about it here. I doubt that she'll take her up on that but that's a funny thing. I mean, I'm sure he's shitting his little pants a little bit. I think she is also gonna send him a cease and desist. So she's getting lawyers and stuff too. It's, it's just gonna turn into, I mean, I you know what? <laughs> Let it play out. Let's see what happens. As long as it doesn't affect his ex-wife or their kids, uh, if it's just Candace versus Steven, like y'all two have fun. I'll get my popcorn for that. Nothing makes me sad about that situation of those two duking it out, go for it. But the thing I really wanna talk about right now is this whole situation around no fault divorce. I feel like it might be the next thing that conservatives go after. I mean, we've been talking about trans rights, the drag bans, there's all, I mean, Roe versus Wade. There's several things happening right now and I feel like their next target may be no fault divorce. And if you guys are unaware of what that is, no fault divorce is basically you can get a divorce without proving fault of the other party. Like someone doesn't have to cheat basically. For instance, for you to say, I'm unhappy and I want to leave. You don't have to prove any wrongdoing of the other side. You can just choose to not be in that relationship anymore. And every state has some version of this, uh, thank God. And I mean, like to me also, this is a side note, but why would you want to be with someone that feels forced by law to stay with you? Like, why would you, that's just strange. Like, seems like a really miserable way to live. But anyway, this Steven Crowder situation really is causing a lot of waves. Uh, this article says the rights move against no fault divorce is an attack on women. I can see where that's coming from because uh, for a long time, women really were kind of controlled through the legal system to be in one way or another below men until sort of recently. So here's a little bit of historical information, some context on equality in the world and by women through law have been sort of forced to be reliant on men for a long time. First, we have in 1974, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. So this law basically granted women the right to have credit cards separate from their husbands. It prevented credit card companies to discriminate based on race, sex, age, nationality, or marital status, and gave every American woman married or not the right to open her own bank account. I mean, imagine not being able to have access to your own bank account or credit account. Like, how do you build credit? How do you do anything for yourself if you have to have a man? That's ridiculous. I mean, I can't believe this only happened in 74. Women who are married and do choose to stay home with children should still be able to build up your own credit because if something were to happen and you got a divorce and you had no credit, you would be screwed. Also, if your spouse died, I hate to like, 
bring it to a negative place, but you have to prepare for these things. Then we also have the Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978, although it wasn't actually defined by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission until about 1980. So that made it illegal to fire a woman for being pregnant, which was previously really common. It took until 1977 for the courts to recognize sexual harassment in the workplace. It took that long to even acknowledge it. So moving on to general stats about women in the workplace today, some interesting numbers. In 2021, 70% of American mothers could expect to be the primary breadwinner in their household for at least one year. Today, women make up more than 50% of the workforce, reflecting growth in healthcare, education, and service sectors over the last decade. According to the Institute of Women's Policy Research, the decline of wages and real earnings of all workers across the board over time, coupled with the rise in the cost of living expenses like housing and food, etc., means that the income women make is critical to the overall well-being of families. Which is very frustrating when you take into consideration that so many conservative talking points sort of center around bashing women who work and expecting them to be barefoot and pregnant at home in the kitchen, just homemakers, which there's nothing wrong if that's what you choose to do, but I do think there's something wrong when that is thrust upon you as an obligation. I'm just really sick of seeing the guilt that people throw at women who choose to still work through being a mother. I'm one of them. Women are 50.47, to be specific, percent of the US population. So logically, it would seem that we would have the same rights, but historically, that has just not been the case. And don't get me wrong, being married is wonderful. It can be horrible, apparently, in some situations like Stephen Crowder, and I feel so sorry for her, but it can be a wonderful, beautiful partnership. But women are 50% of that and should be treated as such. And just the talking points around no-fault divorce and the control that people still try to have over women's rights is just insanity to me. We deserve proper representation in Congress. We deserve representation in the workforce. To be leaders of companies, etc. I mean, we deserve to be successful and to be respected for that and not shamed. And honestly, I, I truly believe that it's only through equal representation in government that we're ever gonna really get there. So stay active, go out and vote, and also let your voice be heard so that this narrative that conservatives or some conservatives, I don't wanna generalize because I'm sure some of them don't think this way, but a lot of them do put women down and have these very like archaic almost views about women. So so especially if you're conservative, let your voice be heard that this is not the way everybody thinks and feels. So hopefully we can move past this very weird point in time. And especially in these like Christian conservative homes, women are told they need to submit to their husbands. That can be taken, you know, in different stages of, you know, literal interpretations. And uh, in conservative talk, especially from people like Stephen Crowder, there is this idea of like women not working as much, staying home, taking care of the kids and, and deriving all of their happiness from that. Uh, you know, he blames a lot of divorce on the fact that, you know, women don't do those exact things, uh, which is interesting. And then he goes, on rants blaming the lack of people getting married, in his opinion, on the fact that men are so scared to get married because if a divorce happens, women take everything that the man has earned. Which is, by the way, women are top earners in several relationships. So I don't know, I'm really getting annoyed at that stereotype that women just take everything from the man because that's absolute bullshit in a lot of scenarios. Women want to like take everything and that's why men don't want to get married. Yet in his situation, he guilts his wife out of work. She stays at home, barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. All the things that he basically insists women do, and then complains that whenever a divorce happens, she might take some of his money now? Like, you're the one that made her not, bitch, like, I don't know, it's just very frustrating, and it seems like hypocrisy after hypocrisy all of the time. Uh, these next clips are very disturbing to me. Like, they make my skin crawl, and I'm just gonna trigger warn anybody who's been in a toxic relationship uh, to be careful moving forward through this, because it is uh, pretty gut-wrenching to watch this situation. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I do a boundary of abuse and control. You are not taking the car. No, because if you refuse to do wifely right things, then I will go pick up the grocery. There's no groceries. I do have steaks. What pellets? My grill. I know it's not a reasonable request. But I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the men? Respect the men. You refuse to do wifely things. He's telling her not she can't take the car. He's demanding that she gets groceries. She's saying, we, we don't have any groceries to get. And then he responds like a child, my grill, my wood pellets, my this, my that, I need them now. And you, as the woman, must do wifely duties and go fetch them for me. And keep in mind, look at her. She is like eight months pregnant with twins in this video. You think he's sitting on the couch smoking. Get up off your pathetic ass, Steven. And how about you do something for your fucking wife who's pregnant? You 
you entitled piece of shit. I can, I told you I was gonna get upset. It's just, he's sitting back there on his fucking throne of entitlement, pointing his finger at his pregnant wife saying, you're not doing wifely things. And she's like, I didn't think we needed groceries. He's like, but I need this, my boot, my grill, my this. And this tone of voice that he has is the same tone of voice that he has when he does his change my mind bit, when he's harassing people on the street. It's just so judgmental. Oh, I'm frustrated. So you're not taking Steven, you're not taking a call. Steven, you are not. Then taking I will it. ask them to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not even about Steven. Get an Uber. Okay, Steven, I can't. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't. Go. I can't be home. You're gonna take the car and leave me here, Hillary. Just think of how boxed in you've made me. <laughs> Think of how boxed in you've made me. I can't call my friends, I can't be home. Does he know that those are two things? She's leaving him at home. And he's like, if you take the car, how can I be home that I'm at uh, that home I'm already at? By the way, they've got this huge, beautiful home clearly he's making. If he can poo-poo away a $50 million contract, obviously he's got friggin' money. This beautiful outside, you know, setup. They've got a pool in the background. They've clearly got money. Why is there one car? Why is there one car? What other reason than him just needing another thing to control her? And she's like, okay, well, fine. If I can't take the car, then uh, I'll call someone to pick me up. Who would you like me to call? Oh, is that a threat? No, she's trying to figure out how to get to the damn store to buy your grill pellets or whatever the hell you like. He is just so combative and nothing she says or does matters because he just wants to shit on her for not being good enough for him. He's clearly insecure in himself, feeling shitty about himself and needs to put his wife down to feel superior. He needs some sort of ego boost. It's all about the ego, which is a very narcissistic thing to do. I'm just saying. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. Fucking do some sit-ups in your backyard. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you probably have a gym in your house. You can't go to your parents. Do you need to go see mommy and daddy right now? Okay, do you wanna go see mommy and daddy or do you want your wife to go to the store? Because you can't have both. Also, why can't she just take, like get off your ass and do it, first of all. Get off your fucking ass and go get the groceries so that you can make dinner for your wife. Who she should be the one sitting down, not you, you piece of shit. I'm so angry. And again, the one car thing. So to full disclosure, for now, for this very short period of time, um, my husband and I do share one family car. We have an RV though, I guess that we could use. And if one person is out and needs the car for something, you know, whoever's got the most important thing default, you know, uses the car. There's been like one time or two times ever, I think that one of us has had to Uber because of that, which that's fine. The amount of money we save and not having to pay for another car and insurance, whatever. We're getting to the point now where we do need to get another car just because our schedules, you know, with, with Asher growing up, he's got like classes I take him two, three times a week and we're actually pretty busy. So we're gonna need another car. So we're in, in discussions now about how we're gonna make that happen. But you know, for, for families that have a Steven Crowder money, I, I really, and so I'm not trying to judge. Basically what I'm saying is I'm not trying to judge people who do share like one family car. That's probably more common than I think. You know, for him, it doesn't really make sense. If they have all this money, why, why can't they just have two vehicles? Especially if she's pregnant with twins, they're gonna have like obligations with those kids that they're gonna need to take them to places like daycare or school or classes or like little mommy and me fun things or swimming. I don't know. There's a million things you can do with kids and she's gonna be busy and oh my god throughout her pregnancy are you kidding me you have to go to a doctor's appointment every like two weeks especially at the end there with twins she probably has to go in every week like th how do they have one car they need to, i mean it's got the only thing i can think of is he's trying to control her where she goes to an extreme that's all i got if you change my mind in the comments if you have an alternate opinion change my mind but in this particular situation i am judging that they don't have two cars i, I honestly blame him for just trying to like micromanage every aspect of her life but that's just my opinion. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. He sounds like a toddler throwing a temper tantrum. No, that doesn't work either. Either. It doesn't work either. No, that's not what I want. I want everything. I want you to go to the store with the car and leave the car here because what if I have to call my friends or be at home? I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said, then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse, okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your beast is sick. Your beast Watch it. is sick. Watch it. Watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need to get. And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit. Okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. 
I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just put it on it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. Become someone that's you make day in and day out worthy of a life worth you. I'm so uncomfortable. So she calls him out. His response is, watch it. Watch it, which to me is a very, very threatening um, tone, which terrifies me because she's incredibly vulnerable being eight months pregnant. And honestly, like for her to sit there and say, I love you um, and try to keep the peace and try to deescalate the situation um, is I, I cannot praise her enough uh, in the face of that type of person and being that pregnant like I can't even like I'm other women who have been pregnant can understand what I'm trying to say here but the pregnancy hormones make you feel a type of way man like it is at least for me I had some really difficult emotions postpartum as well uh, your body is doing so many different things at once it's overwhelming and it's very difficult to not break down to just you know lose it, to feel overwhelmed. Um, to be fair, a lot of that is because what you're doing is overwhelming. Bringing a life, in, in her case, two uh, lives into this world, that's a lot, especially when you're not even happy in your marriage. You know, to have to to have him be the father of your children and try to, I mean, he's a child in, in and of himself. So she's having three now, would have three kids. It's overwhelming and, and all the hormones on top of it to be, to, it, to be in the face of that. I'm just really, I don't think I would handle it as well as her. I don't. Um, I don't think I would be able to do it. So I am really impressed with her and her poise throughout all of this because I think she's got the patience of a god, truly. Oh, and then the thing at the end, Put on the gloves so this is uh some some added context might be needed here she did not want to give the dogs medicine because she is pregnant and feared that that medication coming into contact with it in any way might be toxic to her children which is obviously her priority as it should be his he's not pregnant again let me say this one more time get off your ass stephen and do it you know my husband had to clean the litter box when I was pregnant. Why? Well, because I'm not supposed to. And I loved that. I did, not gonna lie. Cleaning the litter box was never like a favorite pastime. But, you know, that's just, there are things that when you're pregnant, you're not supposed to do, right? You can't drink, you can't have sushi, you're not supposed to clean the cat litter. And obviously, if there's like toxic things, medications and stuff, you shouldn't be coming into contact with it. But he's just like, well, put on some gloves and do it anyway, woman. Become someone that's in it. Day in and day out, worthy of a life worth you. Become worthy of me. Day in and day out. Serve the man. Be more of a wife. Do your wifely duties. Pull up your big girl pants. Put on your gloves. Poison your babies and be worthy of my wife. <laughs> well, I, I, like, oh God. I cannot believe he has the friggin' audacity to act like this. Mm. You just said I love you and committed to that. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed? You said you're committed to the relationship. You said you're committed to the marriage. Well, then why don't you just bend over and fucking just do everything I say? Maybe difficult because your belly's in the way. <laughs> Put on the gloves. Go walk the dogs. It's, you know, hot outside and the sun's blazing. You're sitting there pulling your shirt up because you're sweating. By the way, that's a real thing when you're pregnant. It's like hot, cold. You're, you never are comfortable. You're just never, you cannot heat regulate. So like to me, it's just ridiculous. He's sitting there telling her she needs to be more worthy of him. She needs to do more for him as he sits there on his ass doing nothing. And his pregnant wife is getting berated. Dear God. <sighs> So later off camera, some drama happened. Um, by his own admission, he lost control and screamed at her in a really threatening tone, I will F you up. Which this is probably a regular thing. I mean, this is one instance caught on camera. His coworkers are now coming out saying that he was sort of like this in toxic and workplace environments. Like uh, a lot is coming out about him right now. So w once he did that, his wife, you know, obviously left the home. It does not say whether she took an Uber, called someone or took their car. I hope she took the car. I hope she took the car and just set it on fire when she was done, you know? So this footage was released by her family, uh, by Hillary Crowder's family. And this is a statement from them. In June of 2021, Stephen left their home to pursue elective surgery. Hillary urged him to get the help he needed to address his abuse with the hope that their marriage could be saved and they could peacefully live together as a family. Instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during the birth of their twin children. Unforgivable. 
unforgivable. Like as, as much as I do feel bad for all this information coming out, knowing that the kids might see it, like they're gonna know that he couldn't even show up for their birth. That's not just a, a middle finger to her. It's, it's, this is just tough. After the birth, Stephen bought a townhouse and left their home permanently. Hillary was unaware that Stephen had hired a divorce attorney and asked his assistant to cut Hillary off financially. There is significant documentation substantiating these facts. So at the beginning of this video, I talked uh, about how annoying it was that he made so many comments saying that she chose to leave him. And his only you know, thing was that he picked wrong. You know, she left me, it's her fault. She's the one choosing to end it, not me. And she's allowed to do that. Yet he didn't show up to the birth. I mean, go back. He treated her like shit, right? He didn't show up to the birth. He left, wasn't there for them being newborns, didn't help. Like, good God, especially with twins. Like, where is the father? Nowhere to be found. N no dad, no dad around. Coming from the man who fucking sits on his pedestal of holier than thou and, and preaches about how kids need a mom and a dad. Well, where the hell is he? Nowhere. He's in his townhouse. That's where. And not only was he not there for the birth or helping with newborns, he tried to get her cut off financially. On top of all of it, he wanted to put her in a position to not even have money when she had two newborn babies. Like, can you get any more scummy? I don't think so. And now on top of all of it, there's just this beef that he has with Candace Owens. It's going back and forth. Like I said, she invited Hillary on her show. I doubt that that's gonna happen. But at this point, like, I don't blame Hillary or her family trying to defend her for releasing any of this information. I mean, Stevens responded now threatening to release mental health records which I think is a bluff. Um, if there even are any, you know, maybe he's just saying that to cause doubt in Hillary, but it's not like she's, she's not even saying anything about him, right? There's a video and I, you know, I'm sure if you take the, the worst parts of anybody's relationship and film it and put it out there, it's not gonna look good and you could manipulate it to make one party look really bad or the other, depending on which day you pick. But I, I have a very strong feeling that in this case, it was just him, like, <laughs> I, that, unfortunately, his persona on camera is the same as it is off. And he just, he thinks that he's better than everyone, that he's entitled to someone serving him, even his eight month pregnant wife, thinks it's okay or acceptable anyway to not be there for their birth or post birth, like while she's going through recovery and possible postpartum. And like, that is, that is so heavy. That is so much for him to be absent for. Yet he has the audacity to sit there and say that kids need a mom and a dad and that none of this was his choice when he obviously instigated it. Like, sure, she's gonna hire a divorce attorney and leave him after she found out that he had hired one. <laughs> like, what else is she gonna do? She has to protect herself. I don't know, all, all of this is just really frustrating for me. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people watching, I would love to hear your comments. So please like this video, um, cause that helps a lot in the YouTube algorithm. Uh, share it. I would love to spread this discourse and just get a conversation going about what people think. Am I, I, I cannot be the only one that feels this way. Um, this is just absolutely nuts. And even though I don't, I'm not a fan of like the right wing, community of some of these commentators. I really didn't expect this. I didn't, you know, they, they really do not practice what they preach. A lot of them in the sense of, you know, well, family's everything and Jesus and I love everything about <laughs> the family unit and traditional, all this bullshit. Ugh. Anyway, I'm just repeating myself now and rambling. So please, like I said, like this video, subscribe if you have not already, support me on Patreon if you would like, patreon.com slash Jacqueline. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Psh. Sorry I got so mad. No, I'm not. I deserve to be angry about this.